Hey folks, Triple D Cat here, you're watching Meet the Weapon. Today we're talking about the M417 and playing a little bit more Armored Kill. Now on the uh, Armored Shield map. Sorry it's taking me a little while to get these videos up, but fuck it. We're here now. So let us begin. So, um, in real life, the M417... Actually, the HK417, as it is... As it is known in IRLs, is pretty much an enlarged version of the M416, HK4, uh, yeah, HK416. Um, so if you want to know more details about the weapon, go and check out my M416 video, my first M416 video in this uh, playlist, and you should, you know, get some more information. Most of the stuff is pretty much the same. The differences are uh, primarily, as I said, it, it, it's, it's bigger, and by that I mean most significantly uses a bigger round. The uh, HK416 uses 5.56 NATO round, and the HK417 uses a 7.62 NATO round for, you know, a little bit more sort of long-range power. It's, it's meant more as a designated marksman weapon, although uh, it does have the option of full auto fire in real life at about 600 rounds a minute. Uh, in the game, it's semi-automatic only. It comes in three different barrel lengths, a 12-inch, 16-inch, and most likely in the game we're using the 20-inch barrel. And, uh, I mean, aside from that, yeah, it's more or less the same thing as the HK416. Just, uh, with the larger round, uh, correspondingly smaller magazines, or less rounds in a magazine anyway, uh, 10 or 20 instead of 30 that you would have in the uh, HK416 generally. Although it does come with a, you can get a, you can get a 50-round box magazine for it. But uh, normally you use 10 or 20 round box magazines in the game, 20 rounds. So yeah, it's it's pretty much a bigger M416. Uh, in the IRLs. Uh, so, what about in the game? Well, you guys may recall when Close Quarters ca first came out, when this gun had first came out, I was uh, pretty horrified by how ridiculously OP I thought this gun was. Uh, it's basically... Uh, it has all the same bonuses of the higher fire rate maneuverability that the SKS has, but it does 50 damage instead of the SKS's, uh, I'm not actually sure, I think the SKS does 40-something now, it used to be 34, but I think they tuned it up at some point. Point being, it's a two-shot kill at close range, with the, which the SKS is not, which I felt made it hands down better than all the other semi-auto sniper rifles. Um... It's, it's sort of an interesting case, though, where, looking at the numbers, I definitely, I don't know, if, if you just take the numbers on their own, it looks like this gun's going to be ridiculously more powerful than the other uh, sniper rifles, but when you actually get in game and start using it, uh, I, I don't know, it's something about uh, maybe the combination of the slightly lower base accuracy and the fact the bullets travel a lot so, slower than other sniper rifles. Uh, I, I don't know, um, at distance against stationary targets, it's fine, you can take people out in a split second with this thing, in fact, uh, again, that's sort of the kind of thing that happens to me in-game sometimes, it makes me go, wow, that's fucking OP, is you'll be standing still and you'll get shot three times by it, or twice, but in such quick, quick succession that because of VF3's shitty netcode and the high fire rate on the gun, you don't have any time to react, it's almost like you've been shot in the head by a bullet action rifle. You're dead instantly, but uh, instead of hearing one bullet, you <laughs> just a hail of bullets continuing after you died and, and all this other crap. And um, Although it's ridiculously effective against stationary targets at long range and is uh, very strong at medium and up close, it's competitive with assault rifles and stuff like that in close range, I tend to find, particularly against moving targets at a distance, it does lose out because of that lower bullet travel speed. Um, I, I, I don't know, it hasn't proved to be, wh whether or not it's overpowered by the numbers, it hasn't proved to be widely enough used to be an actual problem uh, in the game, so I'm not mad about it. Just to uh, revisit how mad about it I was previously and, and state that no longer do I feel the raging fury burning within me when the M417 abounds. <laughs> In fact, I don't personally really like it. You'd think, actually, that I would really enjoy this, being as I am somebody who enjoys a more sort of mobile-style recon, and that's what the M417 plays to. It's It's got that bigger clip, that sort of faster rate of fire, a little bit worse at range, but uh, it's, it's a really, really effective sort of running around, 
medium-range kind of uh, marksman support weapon to rock out with your buddies, uh, you'd think, therefore, that I'd really, really like this weapon, given my more mobile playstyle, but actually, uh, not really, to be honest. When I'm playing Recon and I'm not recording Meet the Weapon, I tend to either use an 96 or an M98B. I tend to uh, gravitate, I mean, I don't play much Recon, but I tend to gravitate more towards the bolt actions because uh, I, I like that sort of one-shot, one-kill headshot kind of thing. I mean, I'm still running with my squad. I don't sit at the back and fuck around. I don't do that. That's not how I play. I find it boring, and I find it to be almost completely universally ineffective if you're sitting way at the back with a 12 times scope and bipod, something like that. You'll see me running an 8 times scope, a laser sight, and a straight pull bolt normally. On a bolt action, keeping up with my squad. And that's just because, yeah, I mean, I, I feel that the bolt actions are the best option if you're accurate enough to pull off those headshots with, uh, you know, a moderate degree of, of uh, consistency. So that's, that's what I tend to enjoy and use, and even for the uh, semi-autos, I generally think I'd probably take the M39 EMR uh, over the M417, although I don't really like any of the semi-autos. And this fucking guy... I thought he teleported for a second, but then I, I guess not. Anyway, um, when I was playing hindsight, so it was 2020, though. If we get mad again. You can sort of see here, like, it's a little bit hard to get hits on these moving targets. The bullets are a lot slower than a lot of the other sniper rifles. I do get two hits on this guy while he's driving up, but unfortunately he manages to escape, although... Not for long, motherfucker. But, uh, yeah, M417, I guess it's alright if you're, if you're into these, uh, things. These things with the whole, um... Got the, uh... Sniper rifle over. Yeah, I mean, it's if you're into semi-auto sniper rifles, particularly with sort of lighter, more assault rifle-like ones, this will probably suit you. Not my style, but, uh... You might get a kick out of it. Well, hopefully somebody does. This uh, map we're on here, Armored Shield, is actually my... It's probably my least favorite of the Armored Kill maps. Uh, I, I actually like all the Armored Kill maps. I really like the way it, it uh, looks. It's got, you know, really good colors, really good uh, appearance. I really wish that, you know, um, Caspian Border, for example, looked this good in terms of, you know, a, a green foresty map with some buildings and stuff. I think, uh... <laughs> I think all the dice refused to sort of, uh, do anything to remove the blue filter from the existing maps. They did look at the community feedback of people saying, guys, holy shit, fucking stop with the blue, what the fuck, life isn't that blue, guys, please, why is it blue? <laughs> um... I guess they probably looked at that and then into the, uh... Armored kill maps, they try to incorporate more of a non-blue look, whereby the game actually has some colors other than blue. I'm pretty happy about it. I just, I really do wish that the base game maps looked as good as the AK maps. Yeah, this is my uh, least favorite map with DLC, probably because despite how good it looks, uh, doesn't play that well. Uh, you know, I, I guess for me, I'm more of an infantry-focused player. It's what I find more enjoyable. Um, and... Infantry on this map is really, really hard. You got this sort of area around the village and the farm and near the repair shop. There's, there's some areas around the flags where you can survive as infantry, but for the most part, you've got these giant fucking open rolling fields that are just a total pain to cross, and especially if you're not in a tank. And then, I, I don't know, even if you are in a tank, um, if you got good attack helicopter pilots, good, good helicopter pilots, and good gunship gunners in the air, because of the lack of cover even for tanks, just how flat and open the terrain is, even compared to something, you know, even compared to the other AK maps, like, uh, for any of them, Death Valley, uh, not so much Bandar Desert, Bandar Desert has an equal level of fucking getting detonated by air support if you're in a tank, um, but Death Valley and Alborz Mountain have, like, enough contours, they have some areas where you sort of have cover from the air, this map in Bandar Desert, even if you're in a tank, you are... Uh, you're probably gonna have a really bad day at the hands of the air support. I, I don't know. I, um... I'm not a huge fan of, of the super vehicle-based gameplay. Um, I really, really do like the maps. I think they're well laid out. I like the way they look. I wish they didn't have quite so many tanks and stuff on them. I, I mean, uh, a lot of jeeps, absolutely. And, I mean, you know, I, I, I just, I don't think it's necessary to have as many frame tanks as these maps have. I don't know. I'm aware that it's called Armored Kill, and it seems weird to be complaining about 
too many tanks and now I'm gonna kill the guys. Holy shit! I'm not complaining about it. I understand that a lot of people are into that. It's just not what I personally enjoy very much. Although uh, I do enjoy the maps overall. Fucking yeah, I've been bombed here by my mobile artillery. I think I died really horrifically in a second here. Coffee fuel my commentary. Coffee is an amazing thing. It's I'm pretty sure it's one of the most wonderful inventions mankind has ever created. Hot bean juice. As you may also call it. It just I don't know. As the amount of coffee consumed consumed increases, uh, so too does quality of life improve. Approximately uh, equivalent to each other, although there is a, a, a limit on that. I mean, at a certain point, there, there can be too much coffee, but I haven't yet reached that point. At least not on this day. So you can see, yeah, if somebody's stationary, you can take them out very, very quickly with the M417. Uh, that even not particularly fast. You know, uh, you, you can you can get those three shots out faster than that. If you are uh, paying enough attention, I, I, I don't know, it's kind of weird. It, it does have slightly lower base accuracy, so a little bit more spread than uh, the other sniper rifles, most of which have a spread of zero, by the way, so your bullet goes exactly where you're aiming, at least the uh, bullet actions, at all points of time. The influence of it has a little bit more spread, but it's still uh, small enough that, I mean, you don't, if you're aiming on target, you don't miss because of spread if you're standing still, uh, even at very long ranges. I mean, it's it's still super accurate, guys. Uh, I, I, it's not. So you hear that quoting sometimes. People saying like, "Yeah, man, I may have all the, the fucking advantage over the other uh, um, uh, semi-auto snipers that do the same and damages it in terms of magazine size and uh, fire rate." Although you can actually fire the M39 EMR slightly faster than the M417. Um, it fires faster than the others, though. Anyway. Um, But uh, man, the base accuracy is lower. But uh, it doesn't it doesn't matter. What I found to be the weapon's biggest weakness is actually the travel time uh, and drop associated with the with them bullets at long range, which are it's a little bit harder to manage uh, than the other sniper rifles. It, it's sort of like uh, firing a G3 without a heavy barrel. You know, you get your bullets are pretty slow. You get quite a lot of drop, and uh, it takes a while for things to get there, especially compared to the other sniper rifles. Getting shot by a recon. Fucking asshole. I personally would never sink to the depths of playing the recon kit. Uh, waste of breath. Um, <laughs> no, no. In fact, um, one of the things I wanted to talk a bit about in this video, but I decided to leave off until the next video because hopefully I'll demonstrate it a little bit better in the next one. This wasn't a particularly amazing game. It wasn't too bad or I wouldn't be using it, but. Not an amazing game and didn't really demonstrate what I want to talk about. Is the fact that uh, recon can actually be pretty useful in armored kill if you are doing the right things, as it were. And I'll talk a bit th about that more in in the next video. But I'll just mention that uh, recon done right, our armored kill is obviously dominated mostly by engineers. It's a it's a tank focused DLC. It's mostly all about dem engineers, and uh, it sort of ends up feeling like you know whatever other class you're playing, support. Recon Assault, your job is to keep the engineers alive, keep them supplied with ammo, keep them being where they need to be, to deal with the tanks if you're an infantry player. Your job ends up being to support your engineers so that they can take out the tanks so that your squad can move in and get the job done, because there's always going to be a fucking tank in every objective you get to. You can't just go in, uh, shoot people, and then continue. You have to deal with armor at all points in time. The ideal squad here... Uh, in AK, I'd probably say it would be two engineers, one with an anti-tank weapon, one with an anti-air weapon, uh, maybe, or both with AT weapons, even. Uh, a support player to keep their ammo fed up, and probably an assault guy to keep them alive. Um, so, I mean, recon sort of a factor into that, does it? But, uh, uh, into the, what I would say is pr probably the ideal squad in would kill, but you can be useful as recon. I'll talk about that in the next video. Uh, but yeah, definitely an engineer sort of focused uh, if you want to play an infantry, definitely uh, engineer is the uh, the pivotal class, the class around which it all revolves. It all uh, revolves. Yeah. See, so hear me running across the giant open fields I spoke of earlier. Much to my uh, horrible death in a second here. I probably shouldn't have engaged this guy because it turned out I was too much of a noob lot to hit him, and then he. Uh, 
Well, we got lit up mighty fiercely here. I think there was like five or six people shooting at me here. I, I didn't want to run over this thing because I, I mean, I sort of gave up my only cover. And listen to that, all the sniper rifle bullets going off. This is like an assault rifle shooting at me and then I have getting killed by an MP49. Just holy shit. A horrible way to die. Don't run across the open fields if you can afford it, you guys. Holy shit. Anyway. That's all for this video. I'm not actually sure what weapon we're going to be looking at next, but, uh, well, we'll find out in the next few days. Uh, next part of Condemned Criminal Origin should be up tomorrow. Let me know what you thought of the video, with, uh, you know, rating, comments, all that kind of bull crap, and until next time, Trouble T-Cat out!